Hello, and welcome to Channel 1 Russian News for your daily update on Russia. Thank you for joining us on this lovely day. As we all know, we are in the midst of a civil war here in Russia between the White and Red Armies. The White Army is fighting against the Communist Bolsheviks, while the Red Army is fighting, rather stupidly, in favor of the Bolsheviks. But how exactly did we get here? The main kickstarter of the Russian Civil War was the February Revolution, which began on February 24th, 1917, and ended some eight days later. The revolt, summed up, was a hunger strike by working class against the imperial government. The streets were filled with civilians fighting for the takedown of the Tsar. Eventually, soldiers were called in to keep the uprising low, and as a result, 1,300 lives were lost at the orders of Tsar Nicholas. However, the seemingly, seemingly crazed soldiers eventually lost their loyalty and fought alongside the workers, resulting in the overthrow of the imperial government and the start of the provisional government. This then grew what would become the Red Army and created a rift that eventually developed into the current civil war. With us today, we have Anton Denikin, a White Army general, alongside Lavor Kornilov. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. So, maybe I just have one question, sir. Why did you continue to support the imperial government after the February Revolution? <coughs> Actually, I was not in support of the imperial government. I was in support of the system of government in which the people elect the ruler. I agree that some changes needed to be made, but I did not want the Bolsheviks to take over. For that reason, I became the commander-in-chief of two Mikhailov Akhsum, who was leading the provisional government. But then I realized the provi provisional government had hurried control over their army and that they would not last very long. So I got out of that as soon as I possibly could. But does that mean then that you're in favor of the Bolsheviks, yet you are leading the White Army? Heavens no! That is not where the story ends. You see, after I left the provisional government, I was arrested for trying to overthrow it alongside Kornival in order to create a better government that was nothing like communism. However, we escaped during the October Revolution and assumed command for the White Army. You see, the Red Army is fighting for something weak that will never work. So we, the White Army, take it as our sacred duty to stop them and to hopefully help Russia to return. We are united in our hatred of communism and are stronger for it. Well, there you have it, folks. The White Army is alive and well in Anton Dinikin's heart and in ours as well. Thank you for joining us and always remember, we have no restrictions. <laughs> Thank you for that lovely and informative report, Maria. Now I am here to tell you all about the next event that contributed to the Russian Civil War, the October Revolution. Unfortunately, we cannot get any special guests for this segment, lower budget and everything, but I will provide a brief summary of the events of the revolution. It began on October 25th, 1917 and ended the very next day. But even though it was short, it was very impactful on Russia, and unfortunately beneficial towards the Bolsheviks. Anyway, now for the details. The Bolsheviks led by Vladimir Lenin. Oh. Right, uh, anyways, the Bolsheviks staged a coup d'etat with the hopes that they could overthrow the provisional government once and for all. They managed to do this and did so by capturing the White Winter Palace, which is where the chair of the provisional government was located. From there, the Bolsheviks made new decrees, such as the decree on land, the abolition of private property, and redistribution of land among the peasantry, the decree on peace, immediate withdrawal of Russia from World War I, and the abolition of death penalty. This made the left this made the rift between the Bolsheviks and the anti-Bolsheviks become a ravine and fanned the flame that was ignited by the February Revolution. In turn, it was the full-blown Russian Civil War. Thank you for catching up to thank you for catching us up today, Anna. I know you have to skedaddle, <clears throat> so I'll wrap this up. She's doing a field report. How exciting! Anyways, thank you for watching these two specials on the February and October revolutions. Here at Channel 1 Russian News, we believe that it is the utmost importance to keep you, the public, informed, considering you are the ones getting scammed by Lenin. The White Army can persevere. We must only believe in ourselves and believe that the Bolsheviks are the opposite of progress and the opposite of what Russia needs. Now, let's switch to Anna in the field. Anna? Yes, thank you, Maria. 
Well, I'm here on the scene of what looks to be a forceful takeover of the Eckenberg, where the ex-royal family is being held. Um, oh, miss, can, can I speak to you for a moment? Yes, what for? What's your name? Angelina. Can you tell me what's happening here? It, it looks like a frenzy. Oh, yes, we are marching to save the Tsar. We heard they were being treated horribly. We are trying to reach them before something bad happens. And by we, you mean? The white Russians, of course. Ah, I see. So you're in favor of the Tsar, right? Which is why you want to save him and his family. Well, I do think the government needs a bit of revamping, but I do not agree with the treatment of the royal family. I think they have done great work for this nation, even if the last years have been quite rough. It is one thing to overthrow him, but he doesn't deserve this treatment, and his children especially don't need this, deserve this treatment. He helped my family greatly. We got friends from him when our lands were ruined in military training. What are, what are your views on the Civil War? Overthrowing the imperial government was supposed to be better for Russia. I had high hopes when the provisional government took charge, but over time I lost it all. The Red Army is so aggressive in their tactics, yet nothing is getting done. We are worse off now than when we than we were before they took power. I understood the need to change our imperial government, but the Red Army took it way too far. They are destroying our country. We are being split into two sides. If this war doesn't end, I am afraid we'll lose Russia and everything we stand for. But I must go to our father. He needs help. Well, <clears throat> you heard it here, folks, first on Channel 1 Russian News. Tension between the red and white armies are growing immensely. People have lost hope in the government, and the nation is splitting in two. Trouble follows the royal family in their house arrest. We'll check back in here at Eckenberg later to see how the white army's pursuit for the royal family turns out.